Welcome to the Football Parliament podcast, your one-stop destination for all your football debates, discussions and opinions. Today, I'm joined by Anshiraj and Manish. We will be talking about La Liga, the top four clubs there, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico and Sevilla. And we'll be rating their transfer window. Starting off with Real Madrid, which is the best club in the country uh, or in the league, I should say. Starting off with Real Madrid, Manish. We had a window. decent transfer window. We bought in Kamavenga and David Alaba. And if Mbappe would have come to Madrid, then it would have been a really good transfer window, a very successful one. But not, I'm still very happy with the, the signing of Kamavinga and David Alaba. Kamavinga is a really good player. He's a long-term signing. And he's one of those players whom we can rely on in the coming years. In the coming few years, he'll be a regular starter, a proper number six, number eight. So, yeah, he's a really good signing and pretty much uh, happy with the the transfer window this season of Madrid. And Chiraj, there was a big argument about uh, Kamavinga's signing. First of all, it was literally, it just took two to three hours and Kamavinga deal was done. Basically, Perez uh, just had to lure the Madrid fans and give them an additional signing. So, uh, the recent argument is that Antoine Blanco, who is the player who is developing slowly and steadily in Castilla, and he's going to be a starter in the few years. Does Kamavinga's, uh, does Kamavinga's arrival change stuff for him? Or will he still be a part of the squad in the future? I think Blanco is more of a holding midfielder. So, uh, Kamavinga is more of an agile sort of midfielder. He likes to move around. He likes to sort of uh, get into the opponent's third, final third. And he wants to be a part of the attack as well. Blanco is more of a sitter so he, i don't think that will affect uh uh blanco's progress in any such way I, in my opinion at least uh on that point i think madrid have three very good promising young midfielders in i think their midfield is set for the next 10 years uh valverde camavinga and blanco i think are three very promising and very good midfielders who have uh, like a very solid option for madrid in the next few years See, uh, in the 16-17 uh, season, we had Esco, Modric, Cruz and Casemiro, the midfield for Diamond, which we saw back then. And we've successfully had like proper replacements for them. For Esco, we've got Arribas, who will improve in the years to come. For Blanco, we've got Cruz, sorry, for Cruz, we've got Blanco, who is like a deep-lying playmaker who can play in those passes. And coming up, maybe in the future, can be like a tank, can... Uh, defend like how Casemiro does right now. And Fede Valverde is not technically gifted as Modric, but he can definitely, he does have the stamina to run the entire game, box to box midfielder. I, Manish, I, I, before we go. I'm cutting you, yeah, I'm cutting I, you in between, sorry. But I think Odegaard would have been the perfect re- replacement for Luka Modric. The perfect replacement. Yeah. That can be there, but you know, it's too debatable because we don't know what happened, what can happen with Martin Odegaard in the future. Will he be as successful at Arsenal? Because right now we know with Arsenal, he's 20th and probably not even playing European football. So, you don't know the value of a... Yeah. Anyways, before we go to Barcelona, I had a question for you. David Alaba has played a few games for Real Madrid and what do you make of it? Like, is left back going to be his spot or will he wait for the centre-back spot? You can I actually see in the game he's more he goes up the field from the left hand side and he puts crosses and through balls and all those. The for the one there was one goal we scored against Levante. He passed to Benzema, Benzema and Bale ran. Benzema passed to Bale, Bale yeah. scored. So that was a really good. Then he also had an goal. assist with Vinicius. Then he also gave an assist to Levante. That was a really good one. Assist to Vinicius against Levante. No, no, no yeah. to Levante as well. No, there was that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah, header. Yeah. The header, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A mistake, so, but it's fine. I mean, they're just yes, the starting days. But he's been playing like he's been in La Liga forever. I mean, if yeah, Alaba he's is seamlessly fit in, in the back, squad, easily. Yeah, if Alaba is going to be our left back, then we're pretty much sorted on that spot because Marcelo was clearly injured. Mendy is nowhere to be seen. And Miguel is uh, comparatively young and cannot have that much pressure at such a young age. So. Yeah. That is about it. We go to Barcelona, the second biggest club in Spain. And Anshraj, what do you think about the arrivals this summer? Because there have been many arrivals. Uh, the arrivals of Memphis Depay, the arrival of Memphis Depay, I think, has been 
a blockbuster success. Uh, he has three goal contributions in three matches so far, and I'm extremely pleased with his performances on the pitch. Then moving on to some not so great arrivals, uh, that deadline day uh, loan of Luke De Jong. I don't know, like, uh, like. Like Luke De Jong, I don't think is the Barcelona level of player, uh, but Kuman does have some connections with him, from, you know, as because he was the coach of the Dutch, Dutch. national team. Yeah, and yeah. Memphis Depay also, you know, they had they had a connection at Feyenoord where they won the Dutch Eredivisie. Uh, then we had other arrivals like Eric Garcia again. He had, he had a good game, good first game. Then second game, I think he got sent off. But he did salvage us a point against Bilbao, even even though yeah he could, did 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 get sent off. Uh, then Yusuf Demir, good good prospect, impressed in preseason. Would love to see how he so how Kuman uses him in the in squad system. Yeah, how he I think he's already pretty much fit in. I just think he needs a bit of game, game time, time under yeah under yeah. his belt. Then coming on to the coming on to uh, Sergio Aguero. Uh, I mean, we've not really seen a lot of him. As soon as he land, landed in Barcelona, he picked up an injury and that's ruled him out. So we'll have to see yeah. about Aguero, but I hope he can, uh, you know, become anywhere near the his past form. If he can do that, I think he'll be a pretty good sign. Anjara, just another question before we move on to Atletico Madrid. We saw the arrival of Emerson Royale, who wanted to play for the club, <laughs> and we saw a quick departure in the pretty same window. So, what do you have to say about this? Why did Barca sign him and then offload him? What was the reason for this? I think they just wanted uh, to get some extra cash. I don't see any other explanation as to why they did that. Because Emerson has always stated that it was his dream to play for Barcelona. And yeah. his treatment by the board, I think, is very shocking. Like, a player who always wanted to play for the club has just been treated like this, while players like Amtiti has still, uh, you know, languishing in the club and are taking up huge amount of wages. And it's it's honestly very shameful that we have let Emerson go, even though it was, you know, his, his dream to be a part of this squad. But, yes. yeah, I think... Laporta's handling of this is a bit questionable, but we'll have to see. Although his signing did allow us to register a couple of players, but I mean his departure, sorry. But still, I don't think it was the right way to do it. Also, do you see this team becoming uh, from a Lionel Messi team to a Memphis Depay team? Do you think the game is going to be built around Memphis Depay and he is going to be the main man now? Because even Antoine Griezmann, a very popular figure, has left the club to Atletico Madrid. It's looking very likely because I thought that if we're going to uh, let, if he let, like we didn't really let Messi go, but like Messi, I mean, his contract expired. But uh, I thought with his departure, we could at least see, like, you know, at least we could have had two world class forwards, Griezmann and Memphis, yeah. in the line, trying to uh, contribute up whatever Messi's output was. But now we've let Griezmann go as well. So that raises another, as you politely pointed out, like, like, will it become a Memphis Depay team? And I think it might genuinely become a Memphis Depay team because he does not have an adequate partner in the offense with him. Similar to what Messi... Braithwaite. Oh, come on. <laughs> Braithwaite. Uh, Braithwaite, I don't know, man. He I might think, be... I think Fati is going to return and... I think Fati is going to return and take up that number 10 role. Not exactly as how Messi did, but I think he's got a part to play now. Now that... A lot of uh, offensive players have left the club. I think the club are relying on him yeah, big time. He'll... Manish, yeah, he'll before we of... move on to Atletico and... Madrid, just another thing. Sorry, Anshiraj, continue. I think Fatty will get a lot of game time now. He's guaranteed to be, I think, at least uh, starting now every game. Yeah. At and least 25 to I... 25 games this season in La Liga. Yeah, only. definitely. 25 leagues in now. And speaking about like B- B- Memphis Depay would be Barca's main player, he technically is their main player after Messi left. But then, like the way it w- the game was set, it was all around Messi. It was built up or upon Messi. So I don't think that would exactly be the case with Barcelona because then again they're just repeating that cycling. They're just being reliant on one player 
to get all those results so it won't be technically See, that what i feel is the game the game won't be depay centering what i feel is that he's going to be the main man he's going to be the guy who's going to score those big goals for barcelona yeah, when they yeah, require yeah those are yeah, main man he would be there's yeah. no doubt in that yeah now talking about antoine griezmann to atletico madrid since we are talking about atletico madrid now manish just a few words why did barca let griezmann go even with such a big uh, wage cut I don't I, I don't understand why did they let him go and whom did they bring him for his for his replacement Luke De Jong apparently who's a, who scored around just 10 to 15 goals in his last what 70 to 80 appearances for his club if I'm not wrong so I don't yeah. technically understand what is this they're letting hmm. away Griezmann go who was a really key player in last season's Copa del Rey success for them like those, hmm. those heroics against Granada hmm. in the dying moments of the game so even after that you're letting griezmann go to exactly to your to your rivals so i don't understand what is going on in laporta's head and what's going on with barcelona's management so, hmm. manish how do you see atletico madrid lining up with all these new signings see they've got really good signings now they've made rodrigo de paul signing now they've got griezmann then they got that uh, bundesliga you know he's a number 10 sax number 9 kind of uh, mathias kuna and then yeah. they got yeah. one backup goalkeeper lecomte and those players so they've they've got pretty much many uh, attacking options you know like he like then they've got other players already in their squad soares lorente felix correa icarasco and then with the addition of these i think they're a very strong team and um i i'm going with my gut but technically they have a more realistic chance at the ucl than at the any other uh, spanish club because they have that squad depth and then they have the attacking talent they require and they like if one player gets injured they have the very same player to replace him yeah so are we going to see a suarez at uh, sorry suarez griezmann partnership like we did a year or two back could be could be, could be. And what happens to Joao Felix and Shiraj? No, I honestly don't know what's going to happen to Joao Felix. Uh, I mean, it's best for him now to just, I think, seek for a loan. But the transfer window has ended, so I think he's now stuck at Leti until January. But I think he should at least try to get a loan or, you know, even leave the club maybe because now with because Atletico are not going to. like they're not not going to sign Griezmann like they will sign Griezmann is what i mean yeah. so Joao Felix's so, position in the team is compromised so i think his time at Atleti either it needs a re- reset with alone or it just needs to come to a total end with his uh, eventual departure how much time is remaining on Suarez's contract with Atletico Madrid uh Suarez I think a year or two is left. So because I was reading somewhere that Atletico Madrid have labeled Joao Felix as untouchable, he won't they won't be selling him to any club or something like that. So but I guess if there is only a year or so remaining on Suarez's contract, so then he might just work wait a year or more and then he can then very easily fit into that squad if given the uh, game time and all that. So yeah. Yeah, but money is to be honest I won't be surprised if they extend Suarez's contract for a year or two because that's what's happening with every aging player like a player who's 34 or 35 usually does get a extension for a year or something like that if his performances are really that good. And Suarez is of course performing. Last season we saw that he was one of the key factors for them winning the league. Uh anyways, going towards Atletico Madrid again, the question is for you two. Atletico Madrid this season have signed a lot of offensive players. So do you see them playing something different than the dull or defensive football they usually do manish yeah. so last season they weren't that dull or defensive i've already said it and they scored the same amount of goals as we did so yeah. they won't be yeah. playing that uh, and even against a very good example like against teams like barcelona madrid they often tend to put all their players in the box and do that counter attack and inshallah move but then this time they did try to play like proper like how proper football is played they had decent amount of possession against barca they had good shots so it means they are progressing they are evolving as a club 
in terms of their philosophy and all that. So now, given the players they have, they'll definitely make the most out of them. And Cholo, we know how good Cholo is. Oh, yeah, okay, he compromises uh, good football for results, but now he has the players. So let's see how it works out. Anshiraj. I think their whole departure from the defensive mentality, I think, is a welcome change. Now, at least, you know, players like Griezmann, Suarez, Anel Correa, they'll we'll see the best of them now. Yeah. And that's just more exciting for La Liga as a whole because we'll have now three teams with great offenses in Barcelona, Madrid, and Atletico. Atletico. So, even Sevilla have great offense. So, like, we're going to see... A lot of goals this season, I think, I believe. And we might see La Liga's goals per game rise. Moving on towards the fourth biggest club in uh, La Liga, Sevilla. Manish, what do you think about the signings of players like Rafa Mir or Eric Lamela? Rafa Mir is a really good player. He's a proper good striker and all that. His movement is good. He drops and his goal scoring. And Brian, and then they let off Brian Gill go, but then they got Eric Lamela inside, who's probably one of the top scorers of La Liga at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So they've, they've made good signings. And I don't technically know what is uh, this Lopetegui's philosophy, but they're doing well at the moment. So let's see how it works out. And the players are, the, the, the quality of the players they've signed and how they're seamlessly fitting in into the system. So then it's looking pretty nice. But then, you know, it's just the start of the season. It's too early to make yeah. many judge, judgments. Yeah. So that is the video for today, guys. We spoke about La Liga's transfer window. The top four clubs of La Liga's transfer window. That is the video for today. Like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more.